Hello, my name is Laura Cardona, and I'm an analytic solutions architect at AWS. This is the fourth video in a series for startups called Analytics Bytes. In this series, we empower you to think big, start small, and scale fast on your data journey, leveraging the modern data architecture on AWS. In the last video, we talked about the benefits of getting insights from high volume, high velocity streaming data with common use cases such as log monitoring and real-time device management. Today, I'm going to introduce the topic of building transactional data lakes on AWS. To get started, we'll look at general challenges that bring the need for transactional data lakes. We'll also explore open source frameworks integrated with AWS services that make them possible. And finally, we'll look at a few reference architectures, examining the data flow and see how successful transactional data lakes are being implemented. In the previous three sessions, we introduced the concept and reference architecture of a serverless data lake and stream processing. These are two common starting steps for startup customers on their data journey. With the growth of their data and the number of streaming data sources, many startup customers have higher requirements on their data lake. They want lower ETL time of their data pipeline so that the end consumer can access the data within 5 to 15 minutes latency. They need consistent reads and writes across multiple concurrent users, and they need support of streaming upserts and more. These requirements are hard to achieve on a serverless data lake with plain, Spark, Hive, Presto. Over the past five years, there are a few different open source projects that have come out targeting these requirements with different solutions. They are Apache Hootie, Apache Iceberg, and Delta Lake. These three frameworks make it possible to implement transactional data lakes on AWS. Some challenges that a traditional data lake has with streaming include having to deal with duplicate and late arriving data. Duplicated events cause data accuracy problems with analytics, and late arriving data adds processing complexity for downstream consumers. Streaming data ingestion also generates small files, which is good for write performance, but not for read performance. Therefore, optimal file sizes have to be maintained, and it requires a certain platform to manage file sizes. More challenges come from dealing with change data capture. There is a challenge with consistency and concurrency. When you're writing a Parquet file to an S3 bucket, if there is another job that reads data in the same prefix while you're processing it, it can produce inconsistencies due to lack of snapshot isolation. When you want to update the data in the data lake with CDC, you get a collection of rows that tell you that a particular row was updated. The problem is that the Metastore does not actually have any file or record level indices. It lacks an index on the data storage. Therefore, if you want a file, it must go to that partition and go to that prefix on S3. And the job has to do a list, maybe multiple list operations to get the list of files. We cannot just run an update command or a SQL statement. Because objects are immutable, in order to take a Parquet file and update a record from it, we need to read the whole Parquet file, process it in memory, and then write a new Parquet file to S3 storage. No upsert support results in write amplification. This can be slow and expensive. Similarly, GDPR gives consumers the right to be forgotten, where consumers can ask the company to delete their data. This demands record level delete. And because there's no global index, you still must read the entire data set, remove the specific record, and then rewrite the data. This can be very IO intensive. Let's look at some open source frameworks that solve these challenges. Apache Hootie is an open source transactional data lake framework that greatly simplifies incremental data processing and data pipeline development by providing record level insert, update, upsert, and delete capabilities. You can use it to comply with data privacy regulations and simplify data ingestion pipelines that deal with late arriving or updated records from streaming data sources or to ingest data using change data capture from transactional systems. And finally, Hootie is a platform. It has data and table services that are tightly integrated with the Hootie kernel, and it gives us the ability to deliver cross-layer optimization, reliability, and ease of use. Apache Iceberg is a high-performance table format typically used for huge analytic tables. 
What makes Apache Iceberg effective is how it stores records in object storage. Iceberg manages a large collection of files and tables, and it supports modern analytical data lake operations. Apache Iceberg contains three layers. At the top, we have a catalog, which stores the metadata pointers, which keep track of the current state of the table. Then there's the metadata layer, which stores the metadata information of a table at a certain point in time. Think of a snapshot of a particular table. The manifest list focuses on the table at a particular point in time and has a list of meta manifest files. And each manifest file is a list of the data files and has a metadata about partitioning, columns, etc. This structure makes querying fast and the layers allow pruning and trimming down of which files need to be scanned. Delta Lake is a unified data management system which brings reliability and fast analytics to cloud data lakes. Delta Lake is a transaction layer that runs on top of existing cloud data lakes, and it's compatible with the Apache Spark API. It has scalable metadata handling, and it unifies streaming and batch processing. Although each of these open source frameworks integrate with our AWS services, we'll focus on just Apache Hootie as an example. Apache Hootie integrates well with our existing AWS analytics services. We have an AWS Glue connector for Apache Hootie, that writes data to a Hootie table from AWS Glue Jobs. With Amazon EMR release version 5.28.0 and later, EMR installs Hootie components by default when Spark, Hive, Presto, or Flink are installed. Hootie supports syncing Hootie tables to a catalog. On AWS, you can either use AWS Glue Data Catalog or Hive Metastore as a metadata store for your Hootie tables. Currently, Athena supports snapshot queries and read optimized queries for Hootie query types. You can also use Amazon Redshift Spectrum external tables to query data in Apache Hootie copy on write format when using the AWS Glue Data Catalog as your metadata store. At this point, I want to share with you a few reference architectures that demonstrate successful transactional data lakes on AWS. Our first reference architecture is a batch processing architecture. AWS Database Migration Service is used to connect source SQL Server endpoints and a target S3 endpoint. DMS tasks extract ongoing changes from the source SQL Server and loads data into the S3 data lake raw zone. A raw zone is a landing S3 bucket for all incoming data stored in its raw format. And focusing on the transactionality of this data lake, Apache Hootie enables the efficient upserts and deletes, which lead to better data freshness and lower ETL costs. Hootie also provides the ability to perform data deletion based on record key, which is crucial for GDPR. AWS Glue is used to trigger an Apache Hootie job accomplishing copy on write. And this reference architecture uses a Hootie connection and ETL jobs to create Hootie tables, which maintain ACID transactions on the data lake. This provides data quality maintenance. Leveraging the AWS Glue connector for Apache Hootie simplifies the process to create and update Apache Hootie tables from AWS Glue. This enables the consumption layer to have a ready to use version of the data to be queried by Amazon Athena and then have the data visualized by Amazon QuickSight. For our event stream processing reference architecture, we have data coming in from IoT sensors. You may remember from our last video series discussing streaming data and see how this architecture fits the use case of real-time device management. For ingest, we're sending the data to Amazon Kinesis data streams with Lambda. Schema validation happens at this point. And Lambda takes these events and sends detected anomalies to SNS to trigger downstream remediation. The Apache Hootie layer greatly simplifies incremental data processing, providing support for transactions, record level updates, and deletes on the data. In this reference architecture, Hootie is integrating with AWS Glue. The Apache Hootie file format is used to store the data and perform streaming ETL using AWS Glue streaming jobs. While Apache Hootie solves the record level update and delete challenges, AWS Glue streaming jobs convert the long running batch transformations into low latency micro batch transformations, which allows writing transformed data to Amazon S3 continuously.
For the consumption layer, data science teams can access the data sets and perform ML model training using Amazon SageMaker. Amazon Athena and Amazon QuickSight are used for ad hoc querying, data visualizations, and reports. Aspects of these reference architectures are utilized and bring success to many companies, including NerdWallet. NerdWallet is a company that provides the tools, information, and insight people need to navigate all of life's financial decisions. NerdWallet had an ever-growing data volume. They soon experienced issues with scalability and long batch processing time and complex transformation logic. Their workload contained millions of clients and they had limited extendability for real-time use cases as they needed to scale to handle hourly updates of thousands of record upserts per second. Their solution was to build a data lake with a serverless stream processing architecture that can scale to thousands of writes per second within minutes of freshness on their data lakes. With Hootie on Amazon S3, NerdWallet built a high leverage foundation to personalize user experience. Their consumers can now build more sophisticated signals to provide clarity of all of life's financial decisions. Thank you for joining us today as we explored how to run successful transactional data lakes on AWS. Please join us again for our next video discussing Amazon Redshift. We will look at common business use cases of data warehouses and discuss the reference architectures. Overall, you'll get to see how the data warehouse plays a vital role in the modern data architecture. See you next time. Thank you.